If you're looking at buying a used gas Class A coach, chances are you're mostly seeing F53 options, and that's for good reason, most common one out there. However, there's another option you may not be aware of, and that's the Workhorse W Series. Today, we've got a 2011 Workhorse W22. We're going to take a look at it, talk about its pros and cons, and hopefully help you make a decision. Like I mentioned, F53 chassis is really the most common. However, starting in the early 2000s, Workhorse, who had just purchased the P32 chassis line, came out with the W series. And they came out with the W16, 18, 20, 22, and 24. And with these, it's pretty easy to tell your gross vehicle weight rating because that number after the W, that tells you how many thousand pounds the gross vehicle weight rating is. Like I mentioned, this is a W22, 22,000 pound chassis. It's a 2011, and we're going to go underneath it. We're going to take a look at it in bone stock form. There's been no upgrades done to this. And then at the end, we'll show you some of the work that we do to it to help it drive better. So let's take a look underneath and see what it's like in stock form. Okay, so we're underneath the front suspension on this coach, and first thing you'll notice is leaf springs, solid front axle. So basic design is pretty similar to the Ford F53 chassis. There are, however, a few key differences. So one thing, Workhorse used a different leaf spring design, even with the higher GBWR coaches, they still use just a two leaf pack. And for whatever reason, the design they use with these actually tended to ride pretty nice. So in our experience, you actually get a little bit better ride quality out of a W series Workhorse compared to the F53. And a lot of that does come down to the spring design because their spring bushings actually have a bit less slop in them than what we see on the F53 chassis. So on the F53, we have our front radius rods that control that squirm, that forward and backward movement in that front axle. If we were to rock the wheel on this coach, you would see quite a bit less forward and backward movement in these front leaf springs. And it just comes down to just a different spring design that Workhorse used. The next thing you'll notice that is different compared to an F53 is this piece of box tubing running from one set of springs to the others. This may not look like it, but this is your factory sway bar. So the way it's supposed to work is if you're leading one way or the other, that's going to put this tube in a bind. So it's going to resist some of that lean, some of that sway. It, it works to some extent, but does not as well as a traditional front sway bar. So that's why one of the upgrades that you'll see after we're done with it will be a Roadmaster aftermarket anti-sway bar on the front here that'll really help cut down on that body roll up front. Another thing you'll notice that's different from the F53 chassis is there is no factory front track bar. So again, not quite as bad as on the F53 chassis because their spring bushing design is a bit better, but you do still have some flex there. You've got just a two leaf pack, so you've got flex in the springs themselves. You've got flex in the shackles in the back. All of that can allow this front axle to shift side to side when you're having steering corrections, when you're fighting crosswinds, things like that. So we're actually going to put a Roadmaster uh, Davis True Track front track bar. It'll be a combo kit with the front sway bar that's going to serve to locate that axle side to side better than just the factory leaf springs do on their own. You'll notice this coach does not have a factory front steering control unit on it, so we are going to be putting a safety plus on here. Similar to the F53 chassis, a good self-centering steering control unit such as the safety plus will really help these come back on center quite a bit better. So. We'll have that on at the end. You'll also notice we've got Bilstein shocks. Lots of overspray on those indicates that those are the factory front shocks. So they're most likely fairly tired. Even when they're brand new, we really like the Coney FSD valving quite a bit better. So we're going to take those off. We're going to put the Coney FSDs. That's going to help both the ride quality and the control. And then the last thing I'll note here is that these, while they may look like sumo springs, those are actually the factory front bump stops. They're similar in design to a sumo, except they're hollow inside. And so the sumo springs are going to provide more support while still being able to be in constant contact through their, their microcellular polyurethane construction. Then back up to the front, the one final thing I'll talk about is the steering gear on these. So some of these did run an adjustable TRW steering gear. The ones that ran the ZF were non-adjustable, so this is a ZF steering gear. That means that we cannot externally adjust the free play in it. If this one did have a lot of slop in it, unfortunately you'd be looking at having to rebuild it or put a rebuilt unit on. 
But that is something to be aware of on the workhorse, that some of them did use that ZF non-adjustable steering gear. So you really want to pay attention to whether or not there's play in the steering, since it's going to be more difficult to adjust that play if it is in the steering gear compared to a coach like the F53 that would use a externally adjustable TRW steering gear. So that does it for the front. Now we're going to start working our way towards the back of the coach. So before we make our way all the way to the back of the coach, I do want to pause to touch on the drivetrain. So for power, we've got the 8.1 GM big block, so 8.1 liters, and then we've got an Allison transmission behind it. So this is a really solid drivetrain. I believe that this is an area where really the W series does have an edge on, especially the earlier generations of F53. I personally, I do the low end torque of that big block compared to the 6.8 liter V10. The later 6.8 V10s in the F53 chassis did get a little bit better. And then, of course, the new F53 Ford went in the same direction as what GM did with their 7.3 liter big block V8. So clearly there is an advantage to having that big displacement, that low end grunt. But so just something to be aware of, a difference between the Workhorse W Series and the F53 Ford. So now we'll make our way to the back of the coach. So at the back of the coach... We're going to have the same issue on the W Series as what we do on the F53, where we get that excessive side-to-side -side movement in the rear axle that can contribute to that feeling of tail wag, additional push-pull from passing trucks, sensitivity to crosswinds, and that's where our rear track bar can really help, just as it does on the F53 chassis. So on this particular coach, it's going to be the SS302 rear track bar that's going to bolt to the differential on the one side, and then we're going to have the frame bracket clamped to the frame on the other side. We'll have our rod go from one bracket to the other. That's going to control that side-to-side -side movement. Again, that's that side-to-side -side movement. That's just due to the flex in the spring bushings, the flex in the springs themselves, and then also you get a lot of movement from your shackle hangers as they're just able to move side-to-side -side a little bit. So our rear track bar will really help with stability on this coach. Next thing that we can talk about on this is a rear anti-sway bar. So similar to the front, we do not have a traditional design anti-sway bar on this coach. We have going from one set of springs to the other on the back of the axle, we've got our, our piece of square tubing from one side to the other. So that's your factory rear sway bar. What we're going to do is install an auxiliary anti-sway bar on the back. So we're going to have plates that mount on our axle U-bolts that's going to mount the bar and then the arms are going to connect up to shackles that'll connect to the frame. And that's going to really provide a lot more control and stability on this coach, really cut down on the body roll, the lean. And then just stepping around the back, we've got our Bilstein factory rear shocks. So again, see all that overspray on there? These are factory shocks. They've been on there quite a while. The boot has fallen down out here, which is not, that's not affecting the functionality of the shock, but they're just getting tired. And even when they're brand new, the Kony FSDs are really superior valving compared to these. So the Kony's on the back are really going to help it out as well. So that really does it for our overview of steering and suspension issues, opportunities for upgrades on the workhorse chassis. I realize that this is not comprehensive. We didn't get into brakes. We do have some other older videos regarding brakes, brake issues on the workhorse chassis. That definitely something to research as well as there were some recalls done there. But now we're going to let our techs get to work on it and we'll go over all of the upgrades once they've been installed. All right, now we're back a few days later. We've got all the upgrades done. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So first we've got our Roadmaster front sway bar and Davis True Track front track bar combo kit, which is a great, great package. You can see they share this bracket here on the driver's side. So this front sway bar is now going to supplement our existing front sway bar here. Again, this box tubing does an okay job, but this more traditional front sway bar design is going to do quite a bit more to combat the sway. Our front track bar, that's going to control that lateral movement in the front axle, going to improve our steering feel and responsiveness. We've got our front sumo springs to replace those deteriorated factory front bump stops, so those are going to give us a bit more control. They're going to have some damping properties as well to take care of some of that chatter. And then speaking of damping, we'll come behind the front axle here. We've got our Kony FSD shocks now installed, which are really going to give us better ride and more control compared to the factory Bilsteins. 
They've got our Safety Plus steering control. So this is our self-centering steering stabilizer, 230 pounds of centering force right off of center. So that's going to give us better return to center. It's going to give us more control in crosswinds, better resistance to that push-pull from passing trucks. And then on the safety side, just the, the blowout protection. So this can help you maintain control in the event of a front tire blowout. That does it for up front. Now we'll come on to the rear axle. We've got our inch and three quarter Roadmaster add-on rear sway bar. So similar to the front, we left the factory rear sway bar, that bar, that box tubing in place. But we've added this, so we're gaining a lot more sway control. We've got heavy-duty shackle style end links. It's a very sturdy system. And then we've also got our super steer rear track bar installed. So this is going to work similar to that front track bar. It's going to control that lateral movement, that side-to-side -side movement in the rear axle, which is going to take care of that tail wag feeling. It's going to give you better response to steering input. It's not going to feel like the back of the coach is steering the front so much. More resistance also to that push-pull feeling from passing trucks. We've also got the sumo springs installed here to uh, supplement our factory bump stops. So that's going to give us more support. It's going to give us more sway resistance as well. It's going to work nicely with that sway bar. And then last but not least, we've got our Kony shocks installed in the back here. So these are the 8805-1002s. One thing to note on the Workhorse W series is that around 0304, there was a transition in mounting style. The earlier ones had a eyelet style and a stem style. The later ones went to stem on both sides. So with this being an 11, it had the later style mounting. Just something to be aware of if you're looking for shocks and you have a Workhorse W Series in that 03, 04 year model year range. So that does it for all the upgrades. All this together is really going to help this coach drive so much better. This coach only had about 28,000 miles on it. So it's got a lot of life left in it. With all these upgrades, it's going to be much more enjoyable to drive. So if you have a coach like this, please give us a call. Let us know. We can help you to enjoy safer and happier driving. Thank you. Talk and steer and suspension. The tools of the trade. Shout out to super steer parts. Upgrades made from quiet campfires to the stars up above. Every road is a story. Every turn is a love. Off the